Hey, Peter. Yo. It's the greatest today, you know. Yes. Greatest episode ever. Greatest generation ever. Greatest, greatest group of jazz pianists ever. Is it the greatest, do you think? The greatest is the greatest. Well, it's definitely the greatest generation. That's the name of it, literally. All right, well, we'll find out. Exciting. I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the Yulier Podcast. Two pianists talking music. Oh, he stuck the landing. I said, don't say, you know, don't act, try to act like you belong. Man. You act act like, cool. Be cool. Oh, you act be like cool. they're not, our listeners, uh, our dear listeners who pay attention to every little detail, every that, yeah. every syllable, yeah. <laughs> every consonant that comes out of our mouth, every vowel, they, they, yeah. they deconstruct. They're right. going to notice that you changed the tagline again. For the for the what uh, no the 12th, like third or no hundredth time? time we're giving it a tr we're giving it a trial run. Do you remember the first tagline? Yes. What was it? Uh, j daily jazz advice. That was like our tagline for two years. When well, because we, we were doing it every day. I know. We had we, to change it. We couldn't, and then we, we struggled. We we if 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 you. If you want to sue us, sue us for our accuracy. In <laughs> Wait, no, please don't sue us for anything. <laughs> don't sue us. But if you did, you can't sue us for our accuracy. So we're always, you know, we're we're two pianists talking about music. That's what I realized. That's what we do. The jazz explain was starting to sound a little pretentious. You just see Peter at a cafe. Something. He's staring out a window. He's got a, a oat milk cappuccino, <laughs> and he's just like, "What are we doing? What yeah. are we? Yeah. Who and are we? Who are? Who what is our I? purpose? Who is Adam? What yeah. are we doing? Yeah. We're just two pianists." Talking music. Talking music. I love right. it. Okay. Well, it's a new era. Now we might give a little advice now and then. That's still going to happen, but that's okay. you know that's part of our okay. mission. You know? Well, let's talk about this series we've been doing, which yes. is uh, we've been doing the greatest pianists of every generation. We started with millennials, and then it's we went starting to feel highly arbitrary. Even though I know it is organized by these official, uh, you know, I mean the nomenclature is just weird of these generations. We still haven't gotten used to that, but we're fitting into the framework. Yeah. With which Wikipedia gave us. And also, we were following closely. It, it doesn't really matter. They no. kind of they they fit into neat little cultural boxes. As we're kind of going to see here, some are better than others. This was this is a good one. This is a really good one. It's this the greatest one. This might be well. That's literally the greatest. It's called they're called they call themselves the greatest generation. They no, gave themselves that. Nickname. I don't think that's true. I think the greatest generation was a very uh, is a very you know laid back and quiet like not quiet but like accomplished. Right. But they let others toot their horns. Well, Much the, as mu I mean, the musicians, the pianists that we're going to look at today. That's right. So I would say that, that accurately depicts them. This generation is defined by 1900, born between 1900 and 1924, I think is the end date. We still don't have it right, do we? I, yeah, I think that's right. Though. I think that's right. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the generation that went to World War II. If you're American, they served in World War II. They came home or and were the, or sort of the, they, they, they were the English. parents of the baby boomers, essentially. Baby ba ba boomer. That's right. A baby they, boomer. They were the the big sisters and brothers of the of the silent generation, the Herbies, the Chicks, the Keiths. Right. Yeah. Uh, but there's some knockouts in this one. You want to yes. give it a go first? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to yeah. start, number one, we're going to come strong. Okay. Um, there's no way this gentleman- Wrong could, and strong or just strong? No, right and, right, right and tight. <laughs> okay, good. Um, there's no way you could leave this <laughs> right. gentleman off, none other than, boom, Art Tatum. Oh, Let's there check out is. a little bit of Art Tatum. Greatest pianist of all time, perhaps? Perhaps. That was a hard cut there. Not by me. You know what my favorite part about this generation is going to be? Oh, great. What? Is that they're true artists. Yeah. They're sure. some of the greatest musicians who ever lived. But it was still show business, this. Oh, very much so. You know so. what I mean? Very entertaining. They're, they're coming out of the show business flare, era. A lot of flash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All over the place. 
Wow, yeah, that's good stuff. And I mean, I think our Tatum, you know, probably maybe the most influential on this list today of each of the other musicians that came later. I don't know. But I mean, like, Certainly. like a, a lot of these players, but n none more so than our Tatum, you're going to see that direct classical um, influence. I think probably almost all the, the pianists on all of our lists had classical influence yep. from a technical standpoint. But you're hearing that directly like in that arrangement, but then bam, right into the swing, like that ability through with showbiz to be well, able to just jump right back and forth yeah i mean these players a lot of them didn't grow up with a ton of great jazz piano influences right. because there just weren't a lot of they are the influencers this was they were a lot of them were born pre pre like radio and records right you know our tatum was known as the kim kardashian of his generation oh boy the influencer number one influencer <laughs> peter martin 2022 you heard it here first okay my first uh version of yeah. the greatest generation is uh, this mm. is i think one of the great artists of all time, yes. Bud Powell. <laughs> Greatest bebop pianist ever. Yeah, I'm sure. I love that avant-garde intro, visual. Yeah, it's from 1962, obviously some kind of European film. Yeah. Uh, you should learn the melody correctly like Bud Powell played it. Not a lot of footage of the greatest generation pet pianists available, not like the millennials or the right. Gen X, but. I know. I know. Yeah. Caleb overhead said they cam. said overhead yeah. cam, which they, I mean, we don't that even have it on the first, podcast. That might have been the first ever overhead cam. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, though, look at that. Oh, Just crazy. effortless bebop language, one of the true innovators on the instrument, uh, Bud Powell. Certainly one of the greatest of the greatest. So good. So good. So I like good. I like this generation because we can say greatest of the greatest. Absolutely. Yeah. You would not be wrong. Okay, so next we're going to go um, to one of our favorites here on the pod and uh, another heavy hitter, as we would say. That's Mr. Oscar Peterson. And there's actually a lot of really great videos of Oscar Peterson. And this is one that I hadn't seen in a long time, which is always fun to discover some stuff. Uh, with Joe Pass. It means a lot to me. I didn't see this performance, but when I first saw Oscar Peterson perform 1982 Cool Jazz Festival, a young 11-year-old Peter Martin was Did in Did you really? Joe Pass and Oscar cool Peterson. Cool as in the K-O-O-L K -O -O -L cigarette. menthol cigarettes. Yeah. And I got a free sample that day, which was a little weird because I, I felt like I was young. <laughs> I've smoked some cools in my time. Okay, got it. Not too anyway, weird. this is Joe Pass um, uh, with Oscar Peterson. And I believe Niels Henning uh, or said people Pedersen Join us to do well. Just friends. So friendly, Oscar, in his intros. Oh, look yeah, out here. Look out setting. here. Oh. It's just instant swing. Just turn the turn the switch. <laughs> He's already in Bosendorf for times. I just wanted to kind of highlight Oscar Peterson's comping and not just, we're always looking at his trio stuff, his solo stuff, which is great. Yeah. But listen to this, comping. Oh, look at that. Went all the way out to the edges. He really was a complete, complete musician. Oh, get out of town. Mm. 
But I mean, just in terms of just wow. straight up swing, um, comping vibe. Also, kind of um, lesser known as what I would say, kind of a point guard of jazz piano, and that he made mm. everybody sound better. Like everybody who played yeah. with. Oscar Peterson, he brought up the best. I mean, of course, there's specific musical things that he was doing in terms of comping and s introductions. Nobody yeah. did intros better. And now, just... the greatest musicians make other musicians around them sound better. Absolutely. For sure, all the time. Absolutely. Well, speaking of swing, how about yeah. this guy? What do you know about this guy? Oh. Well, Fats Waller here. Oh. Looks like we're cut off at the top again. No one to talk with. All by myself, no one to walk with, but I'm at the on the shelf. Hey, misbehaving, saving my love for you, for you, for you, for you. I know for certain the one I love. Man. Again, don't be fooled by the mugging for the camera. Fats yeah. Waller is one of the most influential musicians of his generation yeah. on the piano, for sure, or anything else. And again, not scared to be extremely entertaining as he's doing it. Absolutely. And you hear that for phrasing. I forgot about the influence of Louis Armstrong in terms of the vocal phrasing. Yeah. Uh, big influence there. <laughs> so Louis Armstrong could easily be on this list of seven greatest pianists. I know, exactly. <laughs> Although I think he was born in like, what is it, like 1895 well, he, or six? No one knows really? Like No, he, I think he was actually born after, like he said, he always said July 4th, 1900. Oh, is that what he but said? But they said some stuff that he, in order to get into World War One, he lied about his age. He was actually younger. So maybe he was, was oh, part of this generation. Wow, yeah. cool. Okay, next uh, is an artist that, I mean, how could we not have this person in there, this monster composer and pianist, Thelonious Monk. Hey. Uh, and this is, again, there's a lot of great videos, actually, of Thelonious Monk, more so than Fats Waller, for sure. Friend of the show, Thelonious Monk? Friend of, well, <laughs> we, we wish. <laughs> a f we're, we're, his music is a friend of the show, That's for sure. That's what I'm saying, man. Um, but I thought this would be fun, because Thelonious Monk was an amazing composer, amazing pianist, super influential, you know, a lot of like back and forth with Bud Powell. Actually, I'm thinking now Louis Armstrong and Fats Waller. There's a lot of influence back and forth between yep. them. But um, Bud Powell, Monk loved his playing, but Bud Powell loved Monk's playing. Just, yep. you know, a lot of influences here. Um, but he was also known as being very funny, very quirky and all these kinds of things. And that came across in his music. But there's a few little things that I found this clip because I always this is one of a couple where he's in the studio. He was like really about business in the studio. He yeah, was like, yeah. come in and play it and knock it out. Yeah. You know, no second take. Just like me. He didn't like to do any second takes. Just yeah. bam, get, getting right to it. Right. He just, they call him one take. Martin. <laughs> but this is funny because this catches a little bit of him. They're playing Ugly Beauty, a uh, beautiful tune on the Columbia um uh, record underground they're at the recording session but well you'll see what happens they're like look at that hat yeah where do we get that hat they wear suits to the studio charlie rouse Let's, tr let's really do one now. We're all set. <laughs> huh? Let's do one. He's like, huh? Yeah, I mean, we're just running a piece. Why are you stopping us? Okay, in case you can't understand, he's like, we were just playing a piece. Why are you stopping us? He's just in, in sense why the producer stopped. I think that's yeah, tape. That's tail. on you. You should have been yeah. running the tape already. <laughs> he's like, shit. He said it's so He shouldn't have stopped. I think he said it's unnecessary stop. <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Unnecessary to stop. <laughs> He's like, where were we at before we were so rudely interrupted? Uh, He's just amazing. a funny, funny, just <laughs> intelligent guy. You know, it was just, I love moments like this that really humanize uh, these great artists because, you know, we can sit here and talk about his piano playing and some of you might be like, wow, you're saying Monk is one of the greatest pianists and you don't even really show him play, but we, we know the great records and the great recordings. Yeah. But I love when we can kind of put a, some humanity behind these these icons. Oh man, that's such a good, I've never seen that. That's so good. <laughs> uh, my next one, I've got a two for There's another one, sorry. I just remembered, me and Christian McBride are always, oh, Christian McBride has such a good memory on this. There's another one, I think it's from that movie yeah. um, in which they- The um, Clint Eastwood doc. Yeah, uh, was it Clint Eastwood? P he perhaps was an executive producer. On yeah, yeah, he... and it's got some of this footage too. But he's playing, and the producer it might be Tao as well. You know, says like, "All right, when you're done 
practicing uh we let's do a take and monk is like no i'm doing the take you know and he's like practicing and then he says um every, every time you're at your instrument you're practicing yeah which is a funny thing but it's a very like in you know interesting thing it's like every time you're playing you're you're practicing don't call it practice and then recording it's That's all right. the same thing it's all know? the same thing but then he says um you ought to know that to you you're a saxophone player so it's great, man. Yeah. Um, all right, I've got a twofer for mine. For okay. My next one. So this is. Oh, good. I got a twofer too. Next. Two. Earl Hines and Teddy Wilson, two Ooh. greatest generation pianists, two amazing musicians. 1965, and uh, you're gonna like this. Okay. Teddy Wilson, dapper, demure, elegant player, Teddy Wilson. What was Actually, Obama's, Earl Hines as well. Obama's, um, wait. You're talking about Eric? That's right. Striking resemblance to Teddy Wilson. Okay, look at Earl Hines' elbows. Four or five inches above the, four inches above the keyboard? Yeah. Now? Sitting high. He is there. Huh. Two swing pianists, pre-bebop pianists, who had careers during the bebop era, but yes, didn't go that style and still had this incredible effect on the music, this influence with the swing. Teddy a Wilson. Real bridge between swing and, and bebop. Definitely both say? of them yeah. a bridge between swing and bebop. But influence. Hey. Hey. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a sucker for Teddy Wilson. Man. Again, man, not afraid to be. Right. Dare I say, charming? Can we be? Can we play this music and be charming and be Absolutely. entertaining? Well, no, not time? anymore. But back then, you could do it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then he went on to a brilliant legal career. Here we go. Eric Holder. Eric Holder. Eric Holder. A striking resemblance, especially gray-haired Eric Holder here, perhaps, to Teddy Wilson. Am I speaking out of turn there? Oh my God. Are we seeing it? Are we seeing that? Anyway. Okay. So we. I've got a twofer for, for you as well. Oh, I'm just going all over the place. Here we go. No, not that. Here, here we go. This is Mary Lou Williams. Talk about an icon of the music, right? Um, this is sort of a twofer, but it's just Mary Lou Williams. Just Mary Lou Williams. That's plenty playing, but look, nice little introduction on here as well. We feel especially pleased tonight and honored because we have a lady with us whom I adore and admire, and also huh. more important than that, she is a very, very important integral part of jazz history. Would you welcome Mary Lewis? Ray Brown. Huh. Huh. is finally starting to get some do yeah man she's getting some crazy man, okay you talk about wrist finger hand position arm perfect technique uh, you know efficiency but then just deep in that swing man that's uh. beautiful it's like a, a like a technical master class of pianism Double stops. Yeah. Love it, man. 
Yeah, so, so you definitely yeah. hear the, the Teddy Wilson influence there, it's a little bit of Oscar Peterson, but a lot of, you know, um, Mary Lou Williams stuff that she influenced others. And as you said, it's, 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 I mean, she's always gotten her due from those that know, but definitely getting her due even more now, which is exciting. For kind real. of a rediscovery. All right, my last one. Yes. Maybe my oh. favorite one. I have to know. We get so many requests after you've been on the show. They say, would some night you please have Nat King Cole sit down at the piano and actually play a piano number piano. for us? The piano I'd number. To. Did you do it? Okay. <laughs> Underrated. Yeah. Speaking of underrated. What, Teddy Wilson influence. And her line. Super swinging. Maybe uh, a little bit of J-Bat before there was a J-Bat. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just that effect on popular culture. Finger, finger technique. Nice pinky and fourth finger work there. Uh. Interesting, his... Mary Lou Wims never is looking at the keyboard. Look at, he's looking at everything. That's my favorite. That's my favorite Nat is. I do that. I stole that. Yeah. Ooh. Is this the penultimate? Is, is Nat King Cole the greatest of the greatest generation? I wouldn't have thought that going into this, but... I mean, he, he might be. I get out of town that he's possibly a better singer than Sinatra. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Well, be careful. You're going to have some Italian-Americans uh, coming for you now. Oh. Yeah. Duke Ellington. That's another influence. Yeah, Duke Ellington, uh, born just before The Greatest right. Generation. Honorary. Yeah. Nat King Cole, amazing. Yeah, so that thing of like, <laughs> I never, I don't hear too many other people do it, but uh, I do it all the time now that I've heard Nat do it as. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a. I don't know if Nat ever did it on the roads, but perhaps. Doubtful. <laughs> so this was fun. This is the end of an era, Peter, because we've now gone through all the generations. I, I guess know. we could do the previous. I don't think there was we a name. We couldn't find the name for it. There were some big ones in there. You know, Duke Ellington, notably. Duke Ellington. Yeah. Jelly Roll Morton. Yeah, there's ever heard of him? plenty to and go. And then other pianists that we don't actually have performances of, but we have the legacy of their music. Scott, Scott Joplin, Joplin comes to mind. Yeah. Piano rolls, but no recordings, yeah. I believe. So Maybe, maybe one day. But I think for now, we've got it. We've got the 20th century covered, buddy. That's right. That's yeah. right. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, and. Not you, fam. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll hear it. I'm in Steamboat Springs, Colorado currently. I'm in Indianapolis. Hey, how's it going, guys? Andrew, hi. Because I feel inspired to play something else from your playing. Okay, okay, that's great. <laughs> I think using the metronome is a great tool, but it's not the only tool. All of the answers are really in the music. What does it mean to live in a groove, be in a groove? Until next time, happy practicing.